Welcome to the show everyone, my name's Carl and you're watching Successful Archie Student. So I'm coming towards the end of my bachelor's degree, heading into my last semester this year, and I wanted to go over and think about what I've actually learnt in architecture school so far. That way, if you're thinking of studying architecture, you can know what to expect to learn as an architecture student. I want to have a look over all the specific classes I've had over the last couple of years and what exactly I've had to do for those classes so that you guys can know what to expect to learn in architecture school. I also want to share some advice for you that I wish I knew if I could go back in time. So let's rewind all the way back to day one as an architecture student. <laughs> Orientation day was scary. I knew no one going into architecture school and I absolutely dreaded meeting new people as well. I was just nervous and anxious about meeting new people. I found one guy that I thought looked cool and we kind of just hung out for the day and he introduced me to some of his friends and some of the people he knew, which I'm truly thankful for. I remember the local art shop pitched to us a $200 starter pack for architecture school and me being that first year architecture student just like everybody else I bought that $200 starter pack and I didn't end up using 75% of the stuff in that pack so that's my first piece of advice you don't have to buy the $200 starter pack that they're pitching to you because you more than likely don't need everything in that pack and you can also save a lot of money buying stuff secondhand and I've got a whole couple of videos on that if you want to check it out. I just remember my first weeks of uni just walking around having no idea where I'm going. I would ask strangers if they knew where my classroom was and most of the time I had to try and find someone I saw on my first day at orientation day to see where they were going and I would follow them and that's kind of my way of making new friends. So let's talk about the actual classes I had in my first year of architecture school. In my first semester, I had three classes. In fact, over all my semesters, I had three classes. Most university degrees have four, but because Design Studio, it's two units, so you actually only have three classes, even though one of them's worth two, if that makes sense. So first of all, this double unit course, this Design Studio 1, this is the main class for architecture students, and there's a Design Studio in every single semester throughout architecture school. And in my course, it's worth twice as much as any of the other classes in the course. But this is because it's the most work, and it kind of deceives a lot of students because there's no exams and there's no tests. So a lot of first year students think they're getting into this easy course where there's no exams, no tests, no nothing, and it's all easy you going until your first big project hits. And this is usually towards the end of the semester, the big project. Every design studio has a big project, usually worth 40 to 60% of your grade. And considering this is a two unit class, that's a big project. My advice for architecture students starting out is to get on top of your studio work before anything else. It's worth twice as much as any of your other classes, so you may as well put in twice as much effort. And considering it flows on into the next years and you've got a design studio for every year, it is the most important to learn because you're gonna be reusing that information later on down the track. And each of my studios have a specific focus topic. My first semester studio had the topic of foundation, you know, learning the foundations of architectural design. And if we start to break down this studio course into the smaller projects it had, the first assessment was a 20% introductory design project. We had to do single line observational drawings for a building on campus as well as our hands, which is a bit strange. The drawings had to be single line, so we couldn't lift our pencil off the page. And I think this is a great introduction project for first years, as it taught us to get comfortable doing quick sketches to communicate our ideas. And we then had to compose these drawings onto a sheet, which is something that architecture students do a lot of. The second studio project was a sketch design worth 30% of the grade. This was our first time making little form marquettes as well as a scale model, a scale plan, scale elevations and sections. And because it was just an introduction to these things, it wasn't necessarily the best artists, the best model makers that got the best grades. It was the students that put in the hard work to try new things and experiment outside of their comfort zone that ended up getting the better grades. And this was consistent across first year, but as well as all the other years I've been in. The third and final project was the final design worth 50% of the grade. And just like everything else in the first semester, it had to be hand drawn. Again, we were to create larger scale models as well as try our hand at perspective drawing for the first time. It was also the first time coming up with a concept for a chosen brief, which was quite interesting. And the way studio works is that you usually spend the whole semester or the start of the semester working on your submissions and getting feedback from your tutors each week. And then once the submissions are due, you have to pin them up onto the wall and then you will present them and present your ideas and communicate your ideas to the tutors and the crits and in front of your class as well, which is always a bit frightening for first year students. Again, you don't have to be the best presenter or the best communicator, but you have to be willing to put in that hard work to just try your best. And as long as you are trying to improve, the tutors are gonna see that and they're gonna 
give you a better grade for that. Now, the other two courses that I had in my first semester, design construction principles was one of them. This had a focus on construction principles and how things go together. It really was just an introduction course to construction and detailing and how buildings go together. And I think it had a focus on timber construction because this is kind of what we use in Australia mostly or most commonly for residential buildings. Having a timber structure that's clad by say masonry or maybe some weatherboard or something like that. This had three assignments again. Most of the courses have two to four assignments. Firstly, it was a group project worth 15% of the grade and we had to build a vertical structure using just thin balsa. And it was an introduction to timber elements, but it was also just a way to kind of interact with other people in the class. And because it's a group project, it was just an introduction to get to know everyone in the class. The next project was the big one. It was kind of split into two parts, a continuous weekly assessment for completing the weekly tutorials in class. That was worth 25% of the grade. And then the other 60% was for the big project, which was focused on design and modeling. And so design and construction principles was linked closely to studio. And this tends to be prevalent through other years as well usually your sub courses will kind of work alongside your studio courses and they'll kind of complement each other so studio is like the main subject where you're putting in that practical knowledge and you're applying the skills you learn from these other classes. For example, learning about timber construction in DCP, we would then produce a timber model in studio. And I wish I paid more attention in DCP, design construction principles, as it is really important to learn about construction and detailing and how buildings go together. And I remember later on in my first year, in that second semester, I really needed to know some of the things from DCP, but I just didn't pay that much attention to it. That's when I had to come back over it and it was kind of completing two courses in the one semester because I had to try and backtrack from what I didn't learn in the first semester. The third course in my first semester was design, culture and environment. This was a much more theoretical course and involved a lot of essay writing and presenting kind of folio work, doing research on historic buildings from ancient Greece and ancient Rome, that kind of stuff. And this was one of the two courses I've had to write essays. Every other course seems to be a lot more practical where you apply kind of creativity and practical skills. So don't let that discourage you by having to do a couple of essays from, you know, studying architecture. Moving on to the second half of the first year, we had another studio class as we do each semester. So I won't talk too much more about studios as you might have the general idea of it, but this had the same structure of three projects and where usually the last one was graded the most. And this second studio had the focus on dwelling where it involved designing a suspended dwelling off of a existing building. And this was a course where experimentation was really encouraged. The other two courses in that second half of the first year was architectural documentation and and architecture and environment. Documentation had a focus on applying that knledge we learned in that first design construction principles DCP course in the first semester. We had to create a complete documentation set that was hand drawn for a timber structured building. We also had to create, you know, a folio and look at the materiality and choose a lot of stuff for ourselves and kind of take our own path on a proposed design or sketch design. Architecture and environment had a focus on passive design, sustainability, you know, how the wind goes through buildings using sun shading devices and all that kind of stuff. And there was an online submission, the sun just went down on me. There was an online submission where we had to apply all the things we learnt in the tutorials and apply it to a case study building. For Design Studio 3, we had to produce a concept and design to a site that has an existing building, a historic building that we can't demolish already on it. The idea was try to complement the existing site and the existing building on a micro to macro scale. This was also the same semester where we had the first completely online course, Design Communications. And this involved designing an extension for an existing timber structure home. And we had to detail and document the existing building and extension in Revit from our home computers. It was a fully online Online course where the content was delivered online and we would learn from that and then apply it to our own projects in Revit and I really enjoyed this course because it was just our first time using architectural software such as Revit. Architecture and modernity was the second subject where we had to write essays and we also had a mini exam to identify historic buildings from you know the 19th century 20th century and then also kind of guess their architectural styles and it was you know one of those more theoretical subjects which I didn't particularly like <laughs> 
In semester two, had a further focus on architectural software. In fact, it actually had a focus completely on architectural software. Advanced Design Media was a fully online course again. We had to model a case study house and produce renders for it. And this was probably one of my most enjoyable subjects that I've had uh, thus far. We then took this knowledge over to our studio design as well, where we had to design a large scale space science exhibition laboratory kind of building. And again, this was probably my favorite semester for sure. Multi-story was looking at the detailing of a larger scale multi-story building. And the idea was to further experiment with BIM modeling using Revit to produce a documentation set that complies with the BCA, the Australian Design Standards. And this also involved quite a bit of group work as well. So I haven't yet been through semester two of my final year, but semester one was an integration of construction with design. It was really cool actually. The first studio assessment had a focus on designing a master plan and concept for a real site with a real client. The second half of that studio involved documenting that timber structure and creating a detailed construction set of it. This was also the first semester we got to choose an elective course from any other school at our uni. And I decided to study a real estate property course because I thought that was interesting and I actually really, really enjoyed that. But a lot of people, you know, chose to animate or learn another language or learn pottery or whatever it may be. They just, um, you know, picked something they would thought they'd enjoy and then practice and learn something new while they've got that opportunity. For me, I was fortunate enough to choose property, which is kind of looking at the more financial side of architecture and it was a really cool take to look at it from a developer's point of view. So where you can choose to learn anything, I do recommend probably choosing something that's related to architecture. It could be helpful, but if not, just practice and learn something new. Why not? The other course was architecture and technology and this led on from multi-story from the last semester where we had to focus on design into the BCA and Australian standards. It also had the focus of looking at the integration of services as well as passive design and sustainability principles. So there you have it guys. That's everything you got to expect to learn in your time at architecture school. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment down below. Let me know. Let me know if you didn't like it for some reason, but, <laughs> but I would love to hear from you. Please do leave a like on the video. It always helps out and make sure you subscribe for future videos. If you want to check out another video, they're to the side here. That subscribe button is also down below and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Take care guys.